One of the highest paying jobs in web development is to be a Django developer using Python. Unfortunately, installing Python and Django on your local computer and keeping it updated over time can be very difficult. In fact, Django itself, just to install and configure it, can be very, very difficult. So for that reason, I've prepared this video uh, using uh, Docker as a way to install and maintain Django because over time, I find that it is one of the easiest ways to use Django. Um, now, I don't go into everything in this video like integrating with Git uh, because that would be outside of the scope of this video and this is really meant for people who are closer to beginners um, but you could easily add in the extra step of integrating what I'm doing here with Git so that your code is saved in a code repository. Alright, so first off make sure you have Docker installed on your computer. It's easy to install on a Mac typically. It's a little bit harder on Windows but once you have that done the next thing you're going to want to do is create a folder somewhere on your computer so I'm going to come over here on my computer and I'll say website Django in this particular folder. Then I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to say open. And I'm going to go to that folder and try to find it quickly. Go ahead and close that. I'm going to open up the terminal so I can start issuing Docker commands. And the first thing I'm going to do is create a little network. Now, usually people don't create networks within Docker, but I do because later on I'm planning to connect it with Postgres. Um, if you didn't want to run Postgres and Django in containers, you wouldn't have to do this step. Docker network create donut net because I'm going to create a donut themed website eventually. All right. Um, and then from this document, here's the command for starting Docker. Now, depending on whether you're using Windows or a Mac, you'll use one command or the other. Let me go ahead and get rid of the file explorer there and make my screen a little bigger. So I'll paste that in. And because I already had Python as an image downloaded, it went very fast. Um, so with me, it went instantaneously for you. If it's the first time you're doing this, you'll see a, a minute or so of it downloading an image in the background for Python, and then it will log you into a Python container. And the way that I did this, um, it's not going to permanently save the Python container on my computer. Um, so I'm always going to be getting the latest version of Python that I'm running on my computer when I'm using containers and doing it this way. The other interesting thing that I did is um, I made it so that um, the computer technically that I'm running, doc or running Python in is the very, very latest and sitting on top of my computer temporarily, but the file path is actually going to be sitting right here which is awesome sauce. So I throw away the virtual Python computer that's always the very latest, the container, but um, the files will always stay on my computer that I'm working with. Okay, so with that done, um, I'm now in a, the very latest Python virtual environment. So I'll type pip install virtual env. Python m v e n v create that little directory and you'll see it show up right there. So there it is. Looks like it's going to take a moment. So this folder is going to contain um, downloaded uh, packages, modules related to the program that I'm creating. Pip being the package manager and then I'm going to make use of this virtual environment dot space v e n v bin activate there we go it changes to v e n v over here now I'm ready to install Django pip install Django and after just a few moments those libraries will be installed in this folder here. It's taking 
many moments. So we'll ponder how great life's going to be as we learn to be a Django developer and get highly paid to do so. Seems like we have a lot of time to kill. All right, we're good to go. So, I don't know, 20 seconds or something like that. All right, next command, Django admin start project donut website is what I'm gonna call it. And you see now it has created a, a folder and a main administration area for this website. So making good progress. Now we're going to create a super user. So we'll say, uh, actually before that, um, I'm going to change in, uh, into the folder. So CD into this folder where um, a lot of setup files are now located so I can run those. Uh, I'm going to type in from within this folder, python manage pi migrate nice then python manage if I could spell manage.py create super user and I'm just gonna enter in some defaults Um, one thing I need to change before I can run it locally, it's about ready to run at this point. Donut website, donut website, I come to this file here that says settings.py, double click on it, and down here on line 28, uh, by default, um, the Django environment doesn't allow me to visit the website from many different places, so I'm just going to open it up to everything because I'm running it on my local computer, so I'm not really worried about this. So I put in a little star, a wild card for allow traffic from anywhere in essence. Um, and now I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna type in, oops, oops, what have I done? Okay, Python um, manage.py run server 0.0.0.0.8080. I'll run it on port 8080. Now, normally I'd run it on 8000, but I've been doing some stuff in the AWS environment that prefers that I do it in the um, port 8080, so that's why I'm doing that. Okay, so with that done, I can come over here and I can type in localhost 8080, and there it is. So that may seem like a lot of steps. So again, I'll come back to here. Here's the steps we just went through. That seems like a lot of steps, but it's actually not that bad because if you've done this other ways, um, it can be really, really, really ugly and hard. So um, let's go to the next step then, which is to break this down. So let's just say you're gonna stop working for the day. If I was gonna actually do some work, I'd be creating some folders here, modifying my files. But at some point, you're going to stop working for the day and come back another day. So I hit stop, and then I say deactivate. So now I'm out of the virtual environment. Um, I'm going to type in exit to get out of my container. Now, this is kind of magical because the files are still there from um, the website that I just created. They're still here. but Python and Django, um, the container that they were running in is gone, uh, completely gone. That virtual computer, that container is gone. It's been thrown away the way that I set this up, which is awesome. The next time we start it up, it's going to use these files here, but be a brand new, shiny new, up-to-date uh, version of Django and Python. All right, so um, I, I have now exited out of that container. Um, to save a little time, I'm not going to actually do this, but um, what I could do is I could entirely quit Docker Desktop right now, so shut down Docker, and then I could, now, now let's just say it's the next day and I'm going to get back to work again. 
So here's another little set of commands. They're even shorter since I'm going to retain some of the things that I was doing before. So um, I, it's the next day. I just started up Docker again. I just opened up VS Code and by default it opened this folder again. But if it didn't, I could just say open this particular folder from my um, drive. Let's see where I am. Um, okay, so. I'm back uh, where I started from if I were to open this up from scratch again. All right, so uh, the first thing I need to do is start up my container once more. So this is going to pull down the very latest version of uh, Python. So I go and I download that and now I'm running in a little container, a virtual computer that has the latest version of Python running in it. And if I were using a PC, I would be using this run command instead and I'm before I can start Django I'm going to um, set up the virtual environment one more time uh, everything's been installed so I don't have to install it again I just need to start it and to do that I do dot bnv bin activate there we go virtual environment I'm going to cd, actually the, there's a little word wrap there, it looks confusing. I'm going to change directory into the donut website folder. The reason why I'm doing that is because in this folder is um, uh, this program that I'm running to start and stop my server. And so within, within this folder I can now type python Oops. Python manage.py runs server 0, 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 0 .0 port 8080. All right, now I need to find that uh, web server again, that browser. So I reload it, and there we go. We can see that the web server on the back end is noting that I have visited this page. So if I was doing real development, um, I could now add in additional folders here and start updating the files. This reloads every time automatically and I could be doing development actively. So this is, at this point, I've merely set this up, but the next step would just be now following whatever tutorials online and in books for programming in Django and you could just start adding the folders and running the commands and everything's going to be working. So. I hope you enjoy the fact that uh, there's an easy way, quote unquote, to get Django running on your local computer and keep it maintained without installing lots of versions of Python on your computer.